My name is Dean Valentino. I'm a Melbourne musician. I make dream pop indie rock music under the moniker Slow Coaching. And I'm also a big Liverpool fan, so it's kind of nice to, to talk about some football, um, something a little bit different. Well, the thing that gets me out of bed every day, um, I guess as well as making music, uh, I'm pretty lucky to work with a bunch of great bands here in Melbourne, and we have a very nurturing, eclectic music community. Um, so I guess I'm always discovering new sounds and meeting new people, which is really fun. Uh, when I think of Liverpool music, uh, I automatically think of the Beatles, who are they're one of my all-time favourite bands. Um, they're just one band that I know back to front, and I have every record, and I adore every record. And yeah, something that has really rubbed off on me in terms of just wanting to make music and wanting to see how far you can take things. Um, I guess I always just liked Liverpool because I knew that's where the Beatles were from and everything I knew about the city really stemmed from what I knew about that band. Um, and I guess I always imagined a game at Anfield to be like one of those iconic Beatles concerts. Um, just noisy, chanting, that passion from the fans. Uh, I think it's just such a massive part of, uh, of both performances and I can't wait to experience it one day. The Liverpool game, obviously not the Beatles anymore. Um, yeah, but apart from that, I mean, there's a really colourful Liverpool new wave scene from the 80s that I really do dig as well. Stuff like Flock of Seagulls and Echo and the Bunnymen. Um, yeah, I think it's all a part of a, a really vibrant music culture that's been around for quite a long time. Um, I had a very, very short football career. I played about one and a half games of local soccer at an under 12 level um, before I think my dad told me that that was enough. Um, we lost about 13 nil both games and I quit. <laughs> but I do distinctly remember uh, rocking up to my first training session and the only soccer shorts I own had a Manchester United logo on them. And I didn't really know much about the Premier League. I just had these shorts. Uh, but my coach was a very loud Englishman basically told me not to wear that garbage around the club and that I should think about getting some Liverpool gear. And so I guess I became a very soft Liverpool supporter from then on because I felt obliged to. Um, but I, did, I picked back up again in my early 20s um, watching the likes of like Fernando Torres and Jamie Carragher and Steven Gerrard is just my all-time favourite footballer. Um, so getting to watch him in action and actually support the club um, it was so great. My bandmate at the time, um, Dave, was a massive Red supporter too. So we used to just stay out all night and watch the games together. And yeah, I think I just, I loved the culture of it. And I loved the fact that it was on the other side of the world, but there was such a huge fan base here. And, you know, I think no matter which football team you support, once there's a bunch of you together and you're watching a game, you really do feel part of the experience, which is something I think is just so awesome. I love that culture. So I visited Liverpool for the first time in 2016, um, and I was genuinely just blown away by the character and the history of the city. I mean, there were so many things there that I was personally drawn to, you know, from a music and a football perspective. But I mean, just in general, it's amazing. And the people, are, they're truly some of the loveliest people in the world. And there's just this really rich culture that runs very deep. Um, I did get to check out Anfield, but most of it was under construction, as it was the off-season. So didn't get to see a game, but it is very, very high on my list of things to do. Um, whenever I watch the highlights of, uh, <laughs> of Divock Origi's final goal to put Barcelona away last year, I... Um, continue on to the the final song of you'll never walk alone and uh, it just makes the hairs of my neck stand up it's just incredible to watch I couldn't even imagine what it would be like sitting in that stadium and singing that song um, I think our current squad is super exciting 
we have some incredible youngsters coming up too. So hopefully by the time we can travel again, um, the team is still as exciting, still fast paced, and I can get into that stadium and actually hear this song uh, live, I guess, for the first time. Um, the song itself, I just adore. I mean, I love Jerry and the Pacemakers as well. I really love uh, a song of theirs called Ferry Across the Mercy, which I never really knew was about um, the Mercy side and the, the Mercy River until I um, started becoming more interested in the city and the culture behind it. But um, yeah, it's just an incredible song and You'll Never Walk Alone is... Oh, to see that at Anfield would be a dream come true for sure. Um, I think I'm naturally just a very nostalgic person and that often comes through when I am writing. Um, I just put out a song called Everything's Alright which I recorded at home and is all about my, my family that migrated to Australia. And I guess just uh, those moments that I've banked growing up with them and, and learning off them. And yeah, when we said we were going to have this chat about football and music and how those two worlds sort of collide, um, yeah, I just got nostalgic about playing games of FIFA all those years ago and uh, some of the bands that I'd discovered playing this game, um, which is a wild way to discover music, you know, before Spotify and all that, um, to think that we were just playing this game and then going out and, and trying to get our hands on these songs. Um, that 2011 soundtrack is such a time and place for me. Uh, I discovered bands like Yay Sayer and Mark Ronson and like Adrian Lux. Um, I guess not necessarily stuff that I continued to listen to over the years, but definitely a style of music that just defined that time for me. Yeah, I think music and football, they do really overlap. I don't know if it's a cultural thing or if it's just the idea of truly being part of something. Um, you know, if, you, if you're following one of your favourite bands around, <laughs> you go to the shows, you know all the words, you're ingrained in that culture. I think it's very much the same. If you're, um, if you're at a football match, you're there for the moment and you're, you know, you're there for the performance and you do truly feel part of it. And I think it's important to, to make the fans feel part of either one. You know, I look at, at clubs like Manchester City and associate them with Oasis and the Gallagher brothers who um, I know bleed for Man City. And yeah, I was reading something the other day about Lana Del Rey being a big Liverpool supporter. And she actually just did a cover of um, You'll Never Walk Alone too, which is pretty, pretty beaut. And yeah, I think, I think it's really cool when um, musicians or artists of any form really um, do have a vested interest in in football or whatever sport it might be. It's sort of a nice personality booster, I guess. It's uh, it's cool to relate to, to people in that way. And I think it's refreshing as well. Thank you.